So, half an hour later, the check's finished. Um, and it leaves you with this screen saying things are passed and not connected, which is fine. So just press standby and that will take you back to the original screen. In here, you can put in the weight of your child stroke adult. Uh, and we're going to try on our PLC to use these on the bigger kids, so 10 kilo plus in the first instance. So, uh, going to go in there. Yeah, weight. Why don't we sign you up for 10 kilos, make my maths nice and easy. Um, press, press accept. Um, very quickly, you're going to go down to the circuit that we've got. We've got a very simple Tulum circuit on here. Uh, no moisture traps, no heater coolers. Uh, and what we're going to need is a, an HME at the patient end. Um, and so the, filth, the circuit's going to come off onto the HME. And then the gas line, your monitoring line, is going to come off there and sit on your, uh, on your HME as well. Um, there are different sizes of HMEs. Uh, this one's got tidal volume from 70 to 250 mils, so bigger for bigger patients and smaller for smaller patients. I'm just going to put a test down on the end of there. So we come to the screen. You then. wouldn't have the second filter, that's just to protect the test lung. Other bits, in the, oh, sorry, other bits in the circuit, you've got um, the uh, manual ventilation lung. We're not going to use this on PICU, so that's there, sitting there, but don't worry about it, it's interesting, we'll talk about it a bit. So, ventilation modes. If you hit pressure control at the top, it gives you a choice of modes, uh, and these are pretty similar to what we've got on the servo eyes and news, so I'm going to go for pressure control to start with. And it will bring up the settings. The settings are all set up in anaesthetic land fashion. So for instance, they don't want their patients to trigger generally. So you're gonna to have to go through and put some sensible settings in. So peeps, uh, starting about eight. Respiratory rate's too high for me, for my patient, so bring it down a bit. Pressure control is stiff lung, so why don't we go for 14 to start with. On here we've got IE ratios rather than eye times, but if you look up to the top, you'll see what eye time that equates to. So uh, I'm gonna bring that down because I've want to run about 0.8 for now. Your ints rise rather than being in milliseconds is in percentages, leave it be, that's fine. And then I'm going to just change this trigger up to a flow trigger of 5, which is where we have them set on the server use. And after doing all that, as with any Mac A, just press accept. And then you see that things come up along the bottom. Uh, other bits in here is the oxygen concentration, which you can dial up uh, as to where you want to start. And really, all you have to do then is press start. So start case is up the top here. It brings up the same data to make sure it's correct, and then press start case, and away you go, and you're ventilating. The next thing that's gonna happen is all the alarms are gonna shout at you. So hit the alarm profile at the top, and you can correct things that you want to correct. I've got no... Um, patient on the end of this, so at the minute the end title is going to reload, really so I'm just going to turn that alarm off to save our ears, and that will always come up. Accept. Okay, so we're ventilating away, uh, you've got the waveforms that look very similar to what we've got on the unit, um, down here would be your end tidal CO2 waveform. If you want to change things, very similar to Fent and the Unix, if you've got none of the knobs on the bottom, so respiratory rate I want to push down, just tweak it down, confirm. Equally, you can bring up all the ventilation settings by pressing Vent settings and get the rest of them. And you go back into mode and just flick across to your fancy bit of volume control now. Keep Maria happy. Mm -hmm. uh, they look relatively sensible to me, and I'm going to press accept. So what's going to happen now, because my pressure alarm is set wrong, it's shouting at me, I'm going to flip this up to something that's much more sensible. And there you are, ventilating volume control. Up here you see there's a, a knob that says manual stroke mandatory. Um, and that equates to this dial down here, um, and this is where you can flick across and breathe for the patient, but we're not going to do that. 
The time we're going to do that is if we want to disconnect the patient from the ventilator, because if you're in manual, then you don't get that blast of air. The problem with being in manual is it doesn't alarm uh, that you've reconnected the patient and you aren't ventilating them until two minutes down the line. So whilst in manual, it's worthwhile setting up an alarm profile of apnea time and just bring it down to 30 seconds, I would say, except so that if you do do something stupid and forget to turn the patient back to your mandatory mode by flicking that switch, you at least got an alarm going to remind you. Other bits and pieces on here, so you've got your standard pressures coming up at the top. Down the bottom you've got your gases. You've got a different gas that we've got on the unit. We've got our inspired FiO2, so it should hopefully be very similar to here. And you will have to set these up again by coming into the alarm profiles and your FiO2s down here. So if you're getting a FiO2 low alarm because you're in room air, you just need to change it. Um, the one thing that you won't have seen before is the air gas and fresh glass flow. So this is what we equate to the bias flow on the servo U, servo I. For many reasons we've discussed at length, we think starting at a gas flow of about six is probably the right thing to do. If you go much lower than that, um, you're going to get rain out in the circuit, and this circuit's got no water trap in it. Plus you're going to burn through the solar line as the CO2 gets scrubbed uh, faster and faster. If you are sitting at this gas flow, the reason it's not ideal is that Patient triggers may be difficult to sense, and therefore, if you've got a small baby on here or someone who's weak, they may get a lot of asynchrony, so you may want to turn this down, but bearing in mind you're going to burn through your CO2, your soda line quicker, and you may get rain out in a second. So, starting setting six. Um, things you may see is your CO2, your soda line scrubber, CO2 scrubber changing colour over time. So, if this is changing to a purple colour and it's more than about um, three quarters of the way up, we would get hold of the ventilator department and they'll come and change that for us. Um, equally, if you're getting inspired CO2 alarms, so that's where the um, entire situation is not written to baseline before the next breath is delivered, uh, that um, is also a sign that you've got the CO2 not being scrubbed at the system fully and you need to change your solar line. What questions do you have? So, quick video about the flow eye, which you won't have used before if you're an ICU doctor like myself. Um, it's uh, quite straightforward, it tells you what to do most of the time. First thing to know is where's your off button, and it's down the side here, under a flap. Just push, and it takes a bit of time to set up. Uh, a few things to check before you get going. If you are going to use a suction on here, you clearly want a suction unit set up and attached. It's fairly straightforward if you used wall suction. Um, your circuit, we've got a bacterial filter in here, bacterial viral filter in here, a single, uh, sorry, a non-complicated dual limb circuit um, which sits onto there for the time being, and then your end tidal, your gases circuit for monitoring comes off there and fits onto a little water trap that sits around the side. The other thing that's worth noting is your SOS line, which is your CO2 scrubber, if brand new should look white and will go to a horrible purple colour when it gets used up. Uh, so if it's looking purple before you start, then um, get it changed. Other things just to point out on here, this little blue angle looks like it might be attached to your patient. Um, it's purely for the ventilator to do its checks, so that should always stay with the ventilator. So when you start up, having press the button, uh, it will give you a screen that says this, and you want to do your pre-use jet, so pressing start takes you into that. And it's very straightforward, it talks you through. So the circuit is mounted, as we showed you before, it comes into this blue angle piece, and with your gases coming off the end. You want to check that the sampling line and the water trap are correctly sighted, so we've done that already, it's just pushing that in there and attached. And then to make sure the CO2 is, um, the CO2, um, sorry, the soda lime is, is correctly applied, that should all be checked by uh, your ADP, you shouldn't be messing with it, and it should be in that position there. Vaporizers aren't being used, um, scavenging, suctioning, again, not totally important, but if you want to check, it's down here on the side, and we've got suction because uh, we've plugged in the hoses at the back. Not entirely sure what a resuscitator is, I think that's you and me, Maria. 
Uh, is there adequate suction? So the suction, if it's turned on around the side here, there's a little dial that just turns on. And you can dial it up and check it. Turn it on and it's working. And we'll turn it off again because it's noisy. And then uh, gas supplies, which I've already plugged in the hoses at the back. We've also got cylinders on here, so I'm going to check the air and the O2. So just turn them on and see the pressure rise, which it has done for the O2, and then back off again. And I know the air's working because I did it earlier. And make sure they're turned off. So continuing on to the next page. Oh, there's no, sorry, no nitrous. We've not got nitrous in here, so bypass that test. And I've turned the cylinders off, okay. The O2 flush, so there's an O2 flush button on the side, just down here. So you want to press start, check, at the top, and it'll ask you to press and hold for three seconds, which I'm doing, and it's just checking that. And it should say it's passed. Excellent. So, in spiritual expiratory valves, it has the valve's hidden underneath here. Um, apparently there's a problem with this lock, so it's better if you can do this without looking. So it's a visual check of the two valves, and it shows you on the diagram. If you look from this side, you can see one, and then from the other side, you can see the other. All you're doing is starting the check, and you'll hear the valves flicking around in a second, and you want to be able to see them moving. If I can get it focused. If you look hard in there, you'll be able to see them. So, once you happen to see both inspiratory and expiratory moving, just press yes to confirm you can see them. Press continue again, and it now takes itself through a whole series of other tests um, that you don't need to worry about.